everybody. How are you doing? Hi, Anthony. Hey, Sean. Hey, thanks for coming back, man. Uh, thanks for inviting no, me. I was talking to them. Hey, thanks for coming back. How are you doing? We're called Atmosphere, blah, blah, blah. And uh, you came back, and I could tell you were gonna by how many fucking emails you guys sent. Some of you guys sent really good questions, and, uh, and, and not to be disrespectful or anything, but a lot of you guys sent questions that sucked. I just gotta be real with you because I love you like that. Like, the shit sucked. I expect more from you. I do. Because I love you. Because of who you are. And so, no more of this, who is Lucy? No more this, uh, well, what's your favorite Atmosphere album? You know, no more, uh, no more of the, what's up with the hair, Sean? 85% of you probably sent the same five questions. And you should answer those. They took the time out. If you could give a you know, bulk answer, I guess. Okay, mm -hmm. for starters, uh, Lucy was my cat. Does this dress make me look fat? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, why do you care what my hair looks like? <laughs> uh, what was the other one? My favorite Atmosphere album? Um. And you know what? It's time for you to answer a question. You get to answer one now. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> this comes from a cat named Eric who lives in Peabody, Massachusetts. What album have you been dying to get into your collection but have never found or had the chance to own? Well... The funny thing about it is the last two or three years, now that I've been traveling the world with you and paying me a lot and I have a lot of money, I find almost everything I've ever looked for. But I'm having trouble with finding a record by the Fantasy Three called It's Your Rock. I'm looking for that, so if anybody out there like has it and wants to trade. Do I pay you too much? Did I say too much? Oh, okay. I said a lot. All right. Check this out. Tara Lund from Carver, Minnesota. Carver, Minnesota, where is that, man? I have no idea. All right, we'll look it up on the globe later, Tara. <laughs> but uh, big ups, Minnesota. She's got a question for both of us. And her question is, what was the most difficult crowd that you've ever performed in front of? That would be Portugal, yeah, the time the airport lost all our shit, all the equipment and uh, luggage. Yeah, it was, uh, Ali was with us. Yes. And basically we had to use some really, you know, old, busted ass equipment and, that, and even that kept breaking. Yeah. And it, it kind of turned into me and Ali like telling, telling jokes, jokes yeah. <laughs> from stage. Yeah. And mind you, the audience barely spoke any English. Yeah. So their jokes were going <laughs> nowhere. nowhere. <laughs> so my homie Dave from Langley, BC. Dave. He, his question is, what is the most challenging part of being Slug's producer? <laughs> okay, sometimes we'll go into the studio and he'll lay down his verse and do, do it in like one or two takes, no joke. He's like one take Jake, but he will spend hours upon hours with overdubs. Then a month later, he'll go back and he race them all. Yeah, fuck overdubs. That, that's, that's what I always say. Yeah, I'm saying. So, uh, Christopher Schoening, that's close enough, I'm sure. Uh, but there's no city here, so. Oops, sorry, Chris. That's me. That's my right. bad. It's cool. All right, so he says that uh, Felt 2 was one of his favorite albums of all time. I don't know why that is. But anyway, uh, he wants to know, is Merce crazy? And uh, what's it like to work with him? Nah, man, Merce ain't crazy. Working with him is a is a is a really interesting thing. Merce is one of the few people I know that has this like effect on his surroundings, where wherever he is, women flock to that area like like hungry kittens. Sit on each a slice of pizza, and now this is the part of the show where we go to the pseudo-celebrity question of the week. And this week's pseudo-celebrity question is coming from P.O.S. What's up, Sean? What's up, Anthony? This is a question about touring. All right. 
I know when I'm on tour in the backstage area, I like to like request from the clubs that they give me like some socks, the kind of juices and foods that I enjoy to make touring a little easier, more comfortable. I know some people get really crazy with their requests. People have stories about like whatever. But uh, what kind of stuff you guys get on your rider? Tour rider. POS wants to know what our tour rider is. I get it. You want to know the secrets. Um, on our tour rider, it's probably a lot like yours, man. A lot of water, some juice, some beer. Um, I do have socks on my tour rider. Um, T-shirts, um, water balloons, um, PVC piping, um, Mountain Dew. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Earrings. <laughs> <laughs> fucking gold watch, motherfucker. Okay, so uh, Travis Elliott from Texas says he met me. I was really nice and friendly and wants to know if we're always friendly to our fans. Yo. Yeah, you going to answer that question? Oh, I, snap. I didn't even hear the question, dude. I'm sorry. I'm... I'm over here fucking talking to these douchebags on MySpace. Okay, so uh, Logan McDermott from Milwaukee. Milltown! Exactly. <laughs> He's basically asking, like, if you were able to go back in time and talk to yourself as a teenager, what advice would you give yourself? I would, I would tell myself not to uh, start smoking cigarettes. I would tell myself not to, not, to, not to drink and get high so much. Just try to stay more productive. And uh, you know, see those years for, for how crucial they really are as far as you know, setting yourself up for where you're gonna, where you're gonna be later. Mm -hmm. What about, what would you do? What would you say to yourself? Well, I guess I'd go to 18 and I would say, you know, Tony, you know, like back then, my people used to call me Tony. You know, Tony, if you climb in that window just to steal that microwave, you could pay for it for a long time. <laughs> so you might not want to do it. So my homeboy, Gustavo Sanchez from California, wants to know what's the worst jobs that either of you have ever had? You know, just like you, I've had plenty of jobs that are just horrible. But this one in particular I had, I worked at a, uh, a veterinarian hospital as a janitor. Now, I've worked at many places as a janitor in my day, and uh, th that's all generally disgusting. But think about it. You're working with, like, animals. They're crippled and shit. So, like... <laughs> <laughs> Word up, that's, that's, that's a wrap up, we're done. Thank you for tuning in to episode two of Paint It Gold. Don't fret if your question didn't get answered because you can tune in next week, there'll be another episode up where we might answer your question or you can send in a newer, better question to paintitgold at hotmail.com. Don't forget every week, one of you guys is gonna get a free copy of the album when it comes out and that album is When Life Gives You Lemons, You Paint That Shit Gold. April 22nd, 2008 is the release date. That's what's up. I appreciate you. I love you. Yo, is there anything you want to add to all that? No, no, I don't. <laughs> love, peace, and fuck the police. <laughs>